Coming over to the Classical Conversations um, Facebook group. Let me just check to make sure everything is working well. Uh, Northeast. Yep, it says I'm live. There I am. All right, and I'm sitting on my floor again because I determined that this is probably the best place for me to reach all of my books. I got a new bookshelf and I like organized everything. And then I was like coming out of my office to grab stuff while I was on camera. That didn't work so well. So join in, join in. Um, oh, my big light is um, motion detected. I'm not sure why it's not detecting the motion though. Must be this light. Hmm. Let me figure that out. That's very strange. I was trying to give myself more light, but it looks like I might have done something. It's happening. Are you kidding me? You guys, do you see all this movement? Well, I'm not going to be able to do that every three minutes. So, sorry that it's so dark. This is not going to work with me showing books, right? So I'm going to have to... Maybe get a little further in the room. Wow, it's not working. Hmm. Wonder, I'm going to have to do that every once in a while? That's weird. Okay, let me see if I can get, like, maybe reposition in front of this motion detector and maybe it'll detect me showing you the books sorry for me having to be all weirdly creative but we're working with it right okay so let's see that works better Oops, not a big weird shadow funky light right here so Hopefully you can see everything. Now that's going to be weird. But anyway, we're going to get moving. So if you have a question, anyway, you can definitely ask either in the chat. If you're on Facebook, I'm watching today. I'm watching the North East Georgia one. Um, some, I can only watch one. So sometimes I'm watching Northwest Georgia. Today I'm watching Northeast Georgia. So if you want to pop on over to Northeast Georgia Facebook page, Northeast Georgia Classical Conversations. I will watch the chat over there. And if you are live with me on Zoom, I know there are a bunch of you who um, registered today for register for today's challenge A. I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Except I noticed that one of my products is way over there. So hold on, I'm gonna flip you up. I don't want you to see me uh, getting up funny. You can look at my ceiling for a second while I get up and down. All right. I'm so professional, aren't I? <laughs> well, anyway, good morning. If you're just popping on, you missed, you know, all the unprofessionalists. But anyway, um, hi, Jenny C. I think I see her on here. Um, <clears throat> pop in if you have any questions. We're going to jump on and get started. So today we're talking about Challenge A and Challenge B, we're going to go through the products that you would need in order to uh, be doing our curriculum. So first, let me just tell you a couple of things. One, of course, my name is Nicole, and I am the product specialist for North Georgia. And um, I do the products. I categorize the products. When I'm recommending products, I categorize them into tiers. So there, there are three tiers. There's tier one, tier two, and tier three. Tier one is you absolutely must get this in order to be doing our curriculum. Like when you buy this, this is what we're doing. This is the curriculum that we're using. These are the books that we're studying. If you don't buy these, you are not doing our curriculum, which is fine. You can switch it out however you want to. Um, one of the things that um, we always say at Classical Conversations is always default to what's best for your family. So if you choose to do something different, that's fine. You can scale up. You can scale down. You can switch books out. You can do whatever you want. 
but you are paying to be a part of a community that's based on conversation. So in order to participate in those conversations in a meaningful way, you will, these are the products that you will be using. We will be reading together and discussing. So that's tier one. Tier two is, you know, my mother always says, sometimes you have more time than money, right? And so if you're a person who is willing to create your own flashcards or create your own visual learning apparatus to go along with your students' learning style or whatever, then tier two, you can go without. But tier two is like, this would really help you. This could very much help you with this curriculum, the tier one stuff. Okay. So it's like a highly recommend versus required, right? There's required in order to do, like nothing's required. In the big scheme of things, nothing's required. CC is not required. But tier two, tier one is this is required. Tier two is this is highly recommended. Tier three is this is really nice. Maybe some of them I've tried. Maybe some of them I've heard other people try. It has enhanced many people's homeschool, particularly in this subject or strand, but you do not need it in order to do the curriculum. Okay. So that's how I recommend products. Tier one, tier two, tier three. Tier one, again, required. Tier two, highly recommended. Tier three, it's a good product that you might want to have with this strand. Okay. So um, I'm going straight from, one thing you should know is that I did, um, I did direct challenge three, challenge one, I mean, mm, challenge A for three years. I am an essentials tutor currently, and I've been doing that for a while. I think this is my fifth year tutoring. Um, only my third year tutoring here in Georgia, but my fifth year tutoring. And then I was a product sales specialist in Chicago. And now I'm the product sales specialist here. We've been doing CC for about 10 years. Um, so that being said, hopefully I can help you answer some of these questions. I graduated my oldest out of challenge four, um, in 2023. And I have currently a rising challenge, a, um, a first year, essentials and foundations and then a foundations. So I am in this, in the thick of it. All right. So challenge A. Um, first of all, if you are a person who really wants to get some training, extra training and get some more preparation as a parent, we have our parent, parent prep products. Ooh, say that three times fast. Parent prep products. Um, of course, the question the question is um, one of the three books that we recommend that were written by Lee Borton's. We have the core, the core, the question, and the conversation. Okay. So challenge A, B is right around the question stage. The core, if you didn't do the core, you, wanna, you definitely want to do that. This is just the basics, uh, first steps of classical education. The question is right around the dialectic stage, which is where your kids are when they're entering challenge A. And then, of course, the conversation is when you get further on into challenge. Those are highly recommended. And then we also have practicing affirmation and the pattern of God's truth. Those are all great books for parent prep. Logic is our next jam, which is our math curriculum. It's where we do how we do our math curriculum. That is so weird that it's not picking up on the motion. It's got to be the light, right? It's like ambient light blocking the motion because I'm certainly over here moving around. Okay, I think I'll just use the big light because I think it'll, what is happening? <laughs> I don't understand. I really don't. I don't like this light. If it were my preference, I would have a regular light that just stays on. But for some reason, this is what we're doing. Anyway, um, let me try to focus, you guys. I apologize. Um, logic, we do math. Um, math log logic is the name of the strand, and it is always math. We do have a logic book and a few logic curricula that we have in our reasoning strand. But our logic strand is math. And this year, for the first time, we are using the math maps, the math map. The math map is a full K through 12 curriculum that will be released over time. 
Um, but we are in the first year of its release and challenge A is going to be um, the first class that officially requires the math map as part of the curriculum. So the math map is 20, is 30 booklets like this. So one booklet per week, you're gonna get a stack of these booklets and they all have um, kind of a self-contained curriculum. So it has the charts in here, it has the artwork and the discussion topics. Um, it has the answers in the back and it has the games that you can play um, in the back, on the very back end on the back page. Okay, so for more information about that, we're doing a lot of training. This is not a pick up and go curriculum. So if you are used to things like teaching textbooks or Matthew C, where you can just pick it up and go, it's not. You need training on using the math map because it's so different. It's a very classical approach to teaching math because it's so different at first glance. Um, you will want to join one of the math map calls or one of the experience the math map events that's happening around North Georgia that I'm doing. Also, your director can talk with you about the math map if you are entering challenge A. In addition to that, please come to the practicum because this year's practicum theme is math. Um, so you will want to make sure that you come to the practicum to get trained on how to use the math map. This is all that you need. This is the tier one. All you need is the math map complex, okay? Each, each domain, which would be like a year, right? Like instead of saying um, algebra one or, al or what is Saxon says, like eight, seven or whatever year, right? That school year, the name of that, that's what the complex is. Each year has a different name, mathematical term. And so um, there will be the complex, there's fractions, there's um, real numbers, there's polynomials, trinomials, you know, those are the names, mathematical terms that name the, 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 I want to say the year, but I'm trying to think of another word for the level, right? The level. So it's naming the level of that course. So we start, we're starting with our first release is the complex. Um, the, there are some younger ones that have, that are released and releasing in digital format. If you want to get a look at what the inside looks like um, over the course of the years, the, the format is pretty much the same throughout the years. It's just that the information is more in depth as you get further along, just like, just like math does, right? So this is the math map. Um, I store mine in a large, two large binders. Here's one, it has 15 weeks in it. And then there's another one just like it with 15 weeks. Your student would take the week, for week one, they would just take week one. For week two, they would take weeks one and two. On week three, they will take weeks two and three. So you would take the one that you just finished and the one you're just about to start on for discussion and introduction. Um, and um, I just find that the easiest way to do that is just have it in a binder. You can sweep it out. And they don't have to carry these big textbooks to class. They can just take one of the booklets, pop it in a folder, and that's what they have to take to class. Um, in addition to that, for tier, I would put tier two. Highly recommend flashcards because getting your math facts down is key to success in this curriculum and in really in any math curriculum. Every mathematics or PhD, math PhD person I've talked to has told me that 100% of the time when students really struggle with higher level math, it's because they never mastered their basic math facts. Because once you master the math facts, you don't have to do all that figuring in your head very much. You can actually figure something else. You can use that energy to multiply the polynomials or figure out, you know, the parabola, para parabolas and things like that. Super annoying, y'all. Super annoying. Um, um, so what's happening there is once you get those math facts down, you can then use that energy to, to do something else in your brain. So I highly recommend the flashcards, the flashcards. We will have four sets of flashcards that you can purchase beginning in April. Right now we have two, we have addition and multiplication. I really like those because they show the commutative law on every single one, you know, in front of your face that five times three is the same as three times five. They are printed where there are two facts on every face of the card. And those two facts are the commutative law being displayed. Seven times nine and nine times seven are on the same card. Six times three and three times six are on the same card. So I love that. 
That is true for both the multiplication and the addition math facts flashcards. In April, probably next week, we're going to be releasing two more flashcard decks. Okay. One of them is fractions and the other is number notation. Those will go very well with our math map curriculum and they will really help your student. If you master those, it would really help them to be comfortable and ease into higher level math. So that is a tier two. It is not required for you to get the flashcards, but it is highly recommended. We also have, um, I would say, um, I would say tier three, maybe, maybe, maybe tier two, depending on if you have a visual learner or not, or not. we have the math trivium table. Um, so they're usually right here, which means I used them yesterday. Here they are, right here. Okay, so we have our trivium tables. We have a number of trivium tables. And I think this must stem from somebody being a very visual learner because the math, the trivium tables basically take the subjects and put them in picture form. So of course it starts out on the front, you have a hundred number chart. And then here you have the multiplication chart up to, up to 15. But in between you have lots of pictures of how these numbers relate to one another. So numbers, kinds, forms, and representations. So the kinds of numbers we have, the form that they take, and the representation. So we have scientific notation on here. Um, we have decimals, fractions, mixed numbers, percentages, um, and then the laws. We have commutative taught laws, the distributive laws, the all the laws that we learn in foundation. All of that stuff is pictured here, um, and then various operations. And when you come to the math map practicum or to the math practicum, you will see that there really aren't very many operations in math, right? Once you master these operations, then you can just apply those operations to higher um, higher complexity of numbers, but these operations are the same. It's very fascinating. So this would be a tier three, the math. Um, and then we have another one that's a whiteboard. So if, you, if your student likes to just write and use scrap paper and you don't want to go through all the scrap paper, you can just get a whiteboard and they can do all their work on the whiteboard and then erase it and you just have that as scrap paper. I never thought of it before this moment as scrap paper. I think that's probably one of the best uses that we could probably have it as. Um, if you like to see your child's work and you want them to write it out on a paper, then you want to keep the paper. But if you're a person who I just want to see the answer or we're just going to work this out, then a whiteboard, one of our whiteboard trivia tables would be perfect for you. Okay. All right. So that's it for math. If you have any questions, you can let me know. Pop them in the chat. I'm watching and we're going to move to we're going to move to research. Um, for research. Hmm. Oh, yes. OK, so for challenge a research, what we do for that first um, semester, most of the first semester is we give your child a topic and we do, um, you have to use the, you have to use the questions and you do like a lot of um, who, what, when, where, why questions, things that you already know about a subject. We pull those things together and then we send your child to research something along those lines. So for example, we might give you vertebrates and you have to go and pick a vertebrate to, to, to do a presentation on. You have to research that vertebrate, which means you have to learn how to use a library system. You have to learn how to actually do research. And you will come every week with a paper. This is where I have the students use their IEW information um, in challenge A, because the writing strain is going to use a different curriculum than what we used for essentials. But this is where you can keep those IEW dress ups, decorations, and um, all those uh, different things incorporated into your learning explicitly. You can use all those things in any kind of writing, right? Technical writing, persuasive essays, all those things will come into play. But this is where I explicitly expect my students to give me some LY adverbs, give me some. Um, uh, even compound sentences and compound complex sentences, I'll pull in like, please, I need some very short sentences. I need some, you know, uh, strong adjectives, quality adjectives, strong verbs, those kinds of things. Um, so that's really it for science, for research. You don't really need anything additional. There's no textbook that you can buy. There's nothing that you really need for research. Okay. I do like this lab journal now. I didn't use, I used to be like, don't get this. 
just go to the dollar store or go to five below and just get like you know a blank whatever with graphing paper whatever but two a few reasons why i think this would be good to have um the journal is going to be a of course you need a journal it doesn't have to be this one but you need a journal so this is like a tier two for me um high tier two i I think it's tier one for me now, now that I've actually done this. Anyway, let me explain why. So you can, you do need a place where you keep all your notes. You can go anywhere and get a journal. It can be a graphing journal, which is very helpful because you're going to be doing a lot of drawing and a lot of um, um, sketching, right? And you're going to be doing writing along with that. So this is really helpful to do that because when you have the graphing paper, of course, you can keep track of the drawing and, the, and you can scale and all that stuff. Right. So number one, I like to have I like the idea of having matching journals throughout challenge. Right. So I'll have this one. I'll get it again when we run out of paper and I'll get it again when we run out of paper, because when it's time for us to do all the grading and the transcripts and maybe even for like for one college that we applied to, I had to give samples. I have these very neatly done, very, you know, together and they, they're they easy to spot and they work together. So you can probably use this one journal for A and B, depending on how many notes they take, um, because you only do the research for the first like 10 weeks and then you move to science experiments and then you come back to this book to sketch anatomy where they'll be sketching five to four days a week. They're going to sketch the you know, the respiratory system and then the nervous system and things like that. And so this is a nice book to have for that. And it might only use half the book. And then you have the other half and you can, for challenge B. The other thing is that I noticed that at the bottom of some of the pages, they have these cool little quotes. And it like this one says, no one should approach the temple of science with the soul of a money changer. That's Sir Thomas Brown. I want to know how God created this world. I want to know his thoughts. The rest are details. That's Albert Einstein. So those are cool, right? But then in the back, this is what I found to be most helpful. In the back, we have a reference section. In the reference section, there's the scientific method spelled out. I don't know about you, but I think a lot of people probably could use a little bit of a refresher on the scientific method. Um, outline for a lab report. So when they start doing formal labs, they have that as a reference. Parts of a microscope, chemistry, uh, the classifications of living things. I think I skipped the periodic table, right? Um, another, here are the questions that are asked um, for the science, scientific method, the classification of living things. Um, and then they have a timeline of famous scientists. I thought this was really interesting. You could just pick one to read about every once in a while. Johannes Kepler, uh, Leonardo da Vinci is on here. Hipparchus is on here. Isaac Newton is on here. James Clark Mas Maxwell, Louis Pasteur, Marie Curie, George Washington Carver. Lots of time uh, scientists on that timeline. And then we have our uh, references, reference section for measurements. Um, and then common equations and moments of inertia is back here. So when they get into physics, that's going to be helpful. Human organ systems. All that stuff is back here. So this is a great kind of a reference, quick reference guide that you can just talk through with your students. Um, and I think that would be really helpful in Challenge A. So I recommend that for research. That would be like a tier two. There is no tier one for research. We're also recommending the Lyrical Life Science book. Um, I'm not sure how that would be used except as a reference book, right? Because when you do anatomy, you're going to see the life sciences and the cycles and things like that. So lyrical life science is another one that's recommended. Uh, okay, so let's move to reasoning. Reasoning, there are two books and only two books. I don't see the science notebook in the 2024 guide. Um. um let me click it so I can rest to that. Uh oh. It has a nature sketch journal. Is that the same thing? Oh, let me look. Um, nature, yes. Nature sketch journal. Is that the same thing? Science lab journal. Um, well, now I have to check. Thank you for asking that because I've I've been looking at this, but I wonder. I will definitely check. It's a classical conversations product. So I will have to check on that if the Nature Sketch Journal is the same as the Lab Science Journal. Let's look. Let's, I want to see what you see. I'm so glad you said that.
Well, if it's not in the catalog, it should still be on the pay on the website. I will check all of that. I just want to look right quick in here and see what you're looking at. Okay, reasoning. Nope, we were at nature research, nature sketch journal. Hmm. That doesn't look like the same thing. Science lab journal. Maybe it's called the science, maybe the science lab journal is the one that they recommend for later. Well, now I'll have to look into that. I love that you asked me that because I certainly just was going chugging along. But that's what we were supposed to be doing. Yeah, the science lab journal is in challenge one. So it is still available and it's in the catalog, but the nature sketch journal is something different. So I will look to see if I have the nature sketch journal. I have the student lab report handbook. And is this? Oh, yep. <laughs> Here it is. The nature sketch journal. Drawing and writing pages and references for budding sciences. So this one is a little bit different. It looks like it still has some of the same format, but it's mostly writing and not graphing paper. Oh, this one even has tracing. Girl, I was looking at the wrong thing. So will I build my altar in the field and the blue sky my fretted dome shall be and the sweet fragrance that the wildflower yield shall be the incense I will yield to thee, thee only God, and thou shalt not despise even me, the priest of this poor sacrifice. Samuel Coleridge, To Nature, an excerpt from To Nature. Okay. So, yeah, there are some excerpts in there. And then in the back, we do have the reference section. It has cursive writing. I didn't even know that. Cursive letters. Interesting facts. Living things. So it does have the classification of living things and the scientific method back here as well as the same timeline. That is so cool. Oh, we'll doing this. All right, so it has a timeline of scientists that I was talking about in the other one. Marie Curie is on here, Albert Einstein's on here, um, James Watson and Francis Prick. And then it does have the measurements. So it does have a lot of the same reference stuff on here, but this one, oh, and it even has a scientific the, um, periodic table. But this one has like, it's more nature oriented. So this one has the system of nature and things like that. It doesn't quite have everything that you would have like referencing physics and things like that, but it is a an introductory nature sketch journal. And instead of having graphing paper, I feel like graphing paper might be the way to go though. I mean, you could get either one of these and it would work because the, um, we are doing a lot more writing in challenge A, which is why they give you lined paper. But you, if you can write on lined paper, if your child can write on um, graphing paper, it'll give them a place to draw. Um, there's not a lot of blank spaces in here. So, oh, I take that back. This is better. There's blank spaces on the other side. So this is where you could draw and then this is where you could write. That makes perfect sense for challenge A. <laughs> oh, I'm in discovery mode. I guess I'm the lead learner, right? That makes perfect sense for challenge A because what you're going to do is you're going to draw the animal or constellation or whatever that you are doing the research on on this side of the page. And then you're going to write about it on this side of the page. That actually makes perfect sense for challenge A. I wish it were bound instead of spiral bound, but, but maybe um, it also makes perfect sense that it's spiral bound so you can lay it flat. So maybe I'm I'm just completely wrong. Excuse me. So anyway, this is the Nature Sketch Journal. You do need a journal or a place to gather all of the information that you get with challenge A. So it is probably worth getting this, but if you would rather do something else, then you can get something from five below or even the dollar tree um but <laughs> this works out this actually turns out to be perfect blank space on one side writing space on the other that makes so much sense all right um so that's research 
thank you, Jenny, for asking that because um, I was assuming that they were the same thing and they are not. Okay, back to challenge A. We're going heading to reasoning, analogies for all of us and the fallacy detective. First semester is analogies. Second semester is the fallacy detective. Here's analogy for all of us. It's a great book. It's actually, I think it was created for CC. It's a great book. This is probably the strand or the, the product that's going to take you the least amount of time in challenge A. Um, it has all, you're learning about analogies. You're going to be memorizing um, Proverbs 25. You're going to be eight synecdoche by species. That's chapter eight. Um, let's see. Chapters four is math analogies. Chapter five, chapter six is antonyms and litopes, right? We did this a long time ago. Chapter two is alliteration and assonance. So you're going to be learning. It's basically like studying for the SAT five years early or four years early, right? It's all about analogies and different types of analogies and different types of comparisons, um, idioms, uh, parables, proverbs all kinds of things. And then the answers are all in the back in case you need, in case they're not simple enough. Um, when we get to the more complicated analogies and syllogisms and things like that in here, um, the answers are all in the back. This is a tier one for semester one of challenge A. In tier two, I mean, tier one for semester two of challenge A is the fallacy detective. This is a very fun way of introducing um, logical fallacies be careful when your child starts reading this, they will start arguing with you and they will be like, mom, that's a fallacy. When you say something, that's a straw man. Mommy, that's irrelevant. That's a straw man or that's a red herring. They will actually start using the terms in this book. So this is a fun book. It um, is also kind of an easy read um, for, and I, I find that the boys really love it because it's like you read a chapter and then you answer the questions and that's it. The chapters are, there's one chapter and there's the questions on the next page. Right. So it's a pretty easy, easy read. And it's also very good to have conversations about because it can be easy to just read through this and not actually try to focus on the the fallacies. And then when you're trying to use those fallacies or or uh, point out those fallacies in challenge B, you will have to be like, what? So make sure you pay attention because it can be so fun that you don't pay attention and actually take notes. So keep this as a reference book for your future debates, but this is a tier one for semester two of challenge A. All right, debate, exploring the world through cartography is kind of like an atlas. I love this book. It's First of all, it's just beautiful. It's just very beautiful. It's a hardback and it has beautiful, like just everything about this book is stunning beautiful maps. The students will be using this as they go through and draw, learn to draw continent by continent, country by country. Okay. So this is what they're going to be using. And as you can see, there's way more in here than just maps. There are questions and articles that can spark discussion about past political mm -hmm. stances, wars, um, why borders changed, why peoples of the different peoples of the world live where they are, where they do just lots of really great articles and information in this book. This is a great reference book. Um, I think I have two or three. Actually, I actually have more than one of these. I can't remember. I at least have one. And then of course I have this. This is not mine. This is the bookstores, but I think I have two of these because I like to compare and I also have a big old map on my wall. And I just like to be able to go and look at the world and say, this is what's happening there. So you can do that with this book very easily. It's it's very much a compact atlas, with this, which is, you know, atlases tend to be really huge. Um, this is a more compact atlas, but it is still just, the quality of this is amazing. I'm, I'm very, very, very highly impressed with the quality of this book. Okay, so this is the cartography book. It's, it was it was done by um, CC Media, um, and it's available for purchase to anyone. But it is a requirement for Challenge A debate. Okay, there's nothing else required for Challenge A debate. Student planner, everybody needs a student planner. So this would be a good year to introduce them to student planners and helping them map out their days and weeks and things like that. Maybe get them on a schedule of every Sunday night. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go that way. 
<laughs> you look cute. Thanks. Good morning. Good morning. Everybody. <laughs> I know. I just took over the room. Um, that's my baby. My big baby. Okay. Um, so that's debate. Grammar. Challenge. Challenge A grammar is challenge all the challenge A all the way up through four is Henley Latin. Okay, so we are learning Latin. Students have been learning Latin, parts of Latin and things about Latin all through foundations and essentials. And now we're actually officially tackling Latin. I think I took it down yesterday and I did not take the time to put all this stuff back, but here we go. All right, so Henley Latin looks like this. This is our first year Latin book. It's very thick, okay? First year Latin. This is tier one. Also, you need a grammar book. Think of it like a strunk and white. Um, if you know what strunk and white is, um, it's like a very, it's, it's actually called Elements of Style. Here it is. It's actually called Elements, The Elements of Style. This book, I want to say, this is the fourth edition, it says. But the copyright on this book is a long, long time ago. This says copyright 2000. Nope, 1959. 1959 is when the first edition of the Strunk and White book. This is what, when I was, I have a degree in journalism. When I was in journalism school, everybody had a Strunk and White. This is what we called it. We didn't call it the Elements of Style, even though that's the name of the book. Everybody called it the Strunk and White because it's a grammar, like, guide to how things are supposed to be written, how things are supposed to be worded, different things like that, right? How they conjugate all these, right? That's what this is in English. That is this in Latin, okay? This grammar book takes you through the conjugation rules, the declension rules, the word order rules. It takes you through everything. You're going to be referring to this throughout your time doing Henley. Henley grammar. Um, Henley, this is the textbook and this is the grammar book. And then this is the key, the answer key. You're going to want an answer key. Unless you are skilled at Latin already, you're going to want an answer key. This one's like five bucks. There are other ones out there that match to Henley. Like if you do jam with Latin to accompany Latin, or if you do um, what's jam with Latin, Latin with Andy, or some other things that actually teach through Henley, they will have probably a more robust answer key. And I say that because every once in a while, you'll open this answer key, and instead of giving you the answer, it'll say, the introduction three. And so what they're basically saying is, if you go back and read the introduction, you will be able to figure out the answer to this problem pretty easily, right? Which I'm like, dude, that's not cool. Like, I don't want to go back and look at the introduction. I want you to tell me what the answer is. So I sometimes I'm like, oh, that can be frustrating. But usually I can go back to the introduction and look at it and figure it out and it's fine, okay? But if you are not like walking through Latin with your kid like that, then you may want another answer key that just gives you the answers and you can just match it and be like, this is right, this is right, this is wrong, go fix that. How, I don't know how, just go figure out how to fix it, right? Like, or talk to your friends or talk to your director and figure out how to fix that. So you need an answer key. This is a tier one, but it doesn't have to be this answer key. This, These two books, you have to get these two, okay? This is required for Latin. Henry, Latin Henley, first year. Now notice that it says first year in that little black box. Can you see that? It says first year right there in that little black box. That's important because if you get, there are more ones that look just like this. They're just slightly different colors and they will say year two or first year and then second year. And then this one says third year, right? And so they look the same, but who's memorizing the different colors, right? So make sure you look for that first year box and then make sure this grammar book will, will go with you all the way through all six years, okay? Now, once you buy this book, take care of it. It's going to be with you for challenge A, challenge B, and challenge one, okay? So in challenge A, you go through about the first third of the book. In challenge B, you'll do the second third. You start back at the beginning. You do review. And everything that you did in the entire first year of Challenge A, you're doing that in the first semester of Challenge B. And then you're moving on to do another third of the book. And then in Challenge 1, you will do everything at a high level speed. And then you will you officially will finish, will do be done with first year Latin once, once you get through Challenge 1. Okay? So that's Latin. Boom, boom, boom. 
Okay, so that is tier one. Tier two is the Latin workspace. I recommend it. I, you know, I've had some directors say they don't like it. So talk to your director about whether or not you guys will be using it um, or whether or not they recommend it. I'm going to talk to my director and see what she says. But let me tell you what the Latin A workspace is. So you know how you'll get the guide and it'll say, okay, this week you need to do Latin exercise, you know, Henley exercises 16 through 22. Let's just say. And in over the course of the next week, you get, need to get through exercises 16 through 22. Well, your job is to sit down with 16 through 22 and figure out how much they need to do each day. Otherwise, they'll just be doing, 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 doing because Latin is new and long. It can take a long time. And they'll be like, OK, I finished this, but then I didn't finish. And you they'll burn out. Um, and all they know is they got to get through 22. But our job as parents and then eventually their job as students is to take that 16 through 22 look through the exercises and see how much do I do each day. So maybe exercise 16 is super long, but exercises 18, 19, and 20 are really short. So what you would do potentially is say, okay, let's say you meet on a Monday. Your seminar day is on Monday. On Tuesday, you're going to do half of exercise 16. On Wednesday, you're going to do the other half of exercise 16 and exercise 17. On Wednesday, I mean, on Thursday, you're going to do exercises 18, 19, and 20 because they're short because you looked at them and you noticed you could do that. And then on Friday, you're going to do exercises 21 and 22. So now you've taken it and you've broken it down in days. And now when they get done with that particular number of problems on day one, of the, they're not trying to chug through and take three hours trying to get through exercise 16. They recognize, oh, I'm only supposed to do you know, exercise 16 numbers one through seven and or one through 15 and then exercise 16 numbers one, 16 through 30 is going to be the next day, right? It divides it up. You're dividing it up like that. That's what this book does for you. If it says, okay, practice conjugating. If one of the things says practice declining this noun, then there's a chart that actually walks them through declining the noun. And it'll say at the top, this is semester one, week three, day one. Or look, semester one, week 10, day four. Okay. Uh, this one says semester two, week one, day four. So it does that for you. The thing that you have to do, though, is particularly following challenge A, um, those titles won't match up in challenge B, right? So in challenge B, you're going to have to purchase latin space a and latin space b and then all of this stuff is supposed to be done in, in this semester one unless they've changed it i should i should probably sit down and look at these a little closer because it's been a while since i actually had to use it so let's see yeah yep so i'm right so latin b for challenge b starts at semester two it starts at semester two so you're going to go back and instead of the, like this one has semester two in it as well but when you do this again for challenge B, none of this is semester two. This is all semester one, semester one. So I think a lot, some people are like, that's too confusing. I don't want to do that. And they'll just not use the Latin workspace to just use paper and do the exercises on paper. But for challenge A, I found this to be really helpful because it walks them through. And then, and then um, if you were to use these for challenge B, then you would have to go through and change some of the titles based on the dates in the guide. So um, that would be important to know. But other than that, I think this is a tier two. I liked it. I used it. And my daughter was like, I don't know if I would have been doing Latin without it. So you have to take, you know, be the judge of that and see if that will be helpful for your family. OK, so challenge A needs to be we're done. Oh, exposition is the last one. Oh, let me show you this for Latin. I don't think you need the dictionary for this year. It's a it's a tier year three. Um, I recommend people get it when they get to like challenge two. The reason is um, in challenge one, I mean, challenge A, B, and one, all of the words, the all of vocabulary words and stuff are in the glossary. So everything that's in this book that you're going to be studying, the vocabulary that you're going to be studying, studying, it's in the glossary of this book. What happens is when you get to challenge two and you switch books, that's when uh, some of the words that are in this book are not in the glossary of the challenge to Latin book. And that's when you might want to grab the um, 
the Cassell's dictionary. So this is kind of a tier three. It's recommended that you grab one in challenge A, but you don't really need it um, because again, you won't really have words that are not in the glossary of the book until you get to a new book. So that's just another recommendation that we have if you want to get that on your on your shelf. And then of course, the Latin trivium tables. We have lots of trivium tables and the Latin trivium table is I think one of the best ones. I think the Latin and the debate, well, I don't know. There's Latin, there's debate, there's logic, math, rhetoric. Here we go. It looks a lot like the um, essentials trivium table. It has the quid et quo on it. It has all of the endings for the declensions and the conjugations and you can, and it has all the parts of speech. So you'll be able, like if your child has gone through essentials, this will be familiar to them because they will see the verbs, verb chart, and they see indicative mood, right? And then they see uh, all the different moods, indicative, imperative, subjunctive. And then over here, they're going to see pronouns, adjectives, adverbs, prepositions, and they all relate the endings of this all puts it in a picture, relates the endings of each of these words. Or, or not words, but parts of speech in Latin to what they've been doing in Essentials in English, which is why Essentials is such a great program for studying foreign languages. Because once you understand all these different parts of speech, then you can just apply it to various languages. It's a lot easier to pick up. And then we have our quid et quo. If you've been through Essentials, you recognize the quid et quo. Um, it's basically parsing each word and telling us everything you know about that word. So what conjugate, like in Latin, it'll be what, which conjugation or which declension um, and then it'll be, you know, like in English, is it singular? Is it plural? Is it male? Is it female? Is it um, abstract? Is it concrete? And you just parse it. So you study each word so that you know exactly how to use it in the sentence. It's very, very, very thorough. So that is a tier two, I would say. Especially if you have a visual learner. If you have a visual learner, someone who needs to see pictures and see things kind of put together in a way that you know, they can see that I'm a person that I want to see the big picture first. And then I'm like, okay, I see the whole picture. Now I'm going to study this part. And then I'm going to study this part, but I know how it fits into the whole. That's how I think. And if you have someone who's like that, that'd be good. The, the trivium table is really good. All right. So last thing, I cannot believe it's this late. I've just been chit-chatting and I'm only on challenge A. Challenge B is quick though, because it's a lot of rep repetition. Uh, okay. So exposition. Um, is the last strand, and we use words. Uh, we use the lost tools of writing, which is this curriculum here. Lost tools of writing, and it does. This is the teacher guide, and then this is the student guide. Okay, lost tools of writing. Once you purchase this, you have it for challenge A, challenge B, and challenge one. So once you get this, you don't have to buy it again. Um, you don't have to buy anything else for a composition uh, curriculum for composition for three years. OK, then in addition to that, we use words aptly spoken. In. Now, the reason we use words aptly spoken, this is children's literature. You'll notice that there are different words aptly spoken books. Um, there'll be words aptly spoken British literature, uh, words aptly spoken American literature. So make sure for Challenge A, you're getting children's literature. And what we did was we took the books that we're reading for persuasive essay learning and we put pick, um, questions and different things for like that in this book. So for example, if you have a student in Challenge A and they read The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, but maybe you haven't read it yet, you can go in here and be like, okay, let's go a little bit deeper. You read about C.S. Lewis and say, okay, uh, chapter 11, what did the animals think of Uncle Andrew? What did they do to him, right? This is the magician's nephew. Um, who were the first king and queen of Narnia? Like they give you questions to ask so you can interact with your student at the, as a, at the table in a conversation, even if you haven't fully read the book. So this is, um, I would say this is, mm, it's not really required because you could just read the books or you could just let them read the books and narrate them to you. And you could just be like, hey, you can go look it up and ask questions. But this is a very high tier two, okay? Very high tier two. Um, and then everything else um, that you need is books that you would purchase either from our bookstore or you can get them from the library or you can get them from a half price bookstore or you could go to Barnes and Noble. Like all of these are living books. They're not books that are exclusive to CC. So The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe is the first one that you'll read. And then Carry On Mr. Bowditch, which is one of my favorites, The Magician's Nephew, Number the Stars, Amos Fortune Freeman, The Secret Garden, The Door in the Wall, A Gathering of Days, Crispin the Cross of Lead and The Bronze Bow. All of those are listed 
in the guide, in the in the guide, yes, but in the catalog, and um, they're listed in the order that you're going to read them for the most part. I think there's one challenge where this year somehow it got mixed up due to space, so it's not necessarily in the right order, but for challenge A, it's all listed in the order that you're going to read them. So, um, and you again, you can get them anywhere. I like like to get them here because they have like these cool copper lodge if you can get it if you can get it in the copper lodge library status like they're all the same and they look cute on your shelf and stuff like that that's not one of them that's um kings of rome but um anyway yeah so those books are what you'll be reading for exposition and then you'll be using those books to learn the five canons of writing and you'll be writing persuasive essays throughout the year so that's it for challenge a Real quick, challenge B is all pretty much the same. Um, you're going to want to read the conversation, one of those books, parent prep books. Um, and then you move to, for challenge B this year, we're not doing the math map yet. We haven't released the math map for challenge B. So for challenge B, you would still be using Saxon. And Saxon is, you get the homeschool kit, which comes with the textbook and the test book, right? That's the homeschool kit. Now, um, you can also get algebra two, I mean, you can also get the solutions guide and you can also um, get the DVDs. Tutoring t DVDs, <laughs> tutoring DVDs. Just keep in mind that Saxon is no longer available after these get sell out. We will not be restocking Saxon into our warehouse because we are transitioning into the map map. So if you know that you are in challenge B and you are moving up, and you're going to be staying with Saxon all the way through, you may want to grab whatever Saxon you want to grab while they are still in our warehouse. Once they sell out, you will have to find another vendor to go and purchase Saxon from, okay? Um, so that's it for logic. I talked through all the other stuff. For research for Challenge B, we have Defeating Darwinism. Defeating Darwinism. And discovering Atomos. Now, discovering Atomos is actually um, a a packet that you'll get that you have to put into a binder. Okay, so it's a small packet. Discovering Atomos is a small packet that you'll get three hole punched, and you're going to be reading through that and studying that. It's a grammatical introduction to atomic process in chemistry. So it's kind of like your intro to chemistry. Okay, so that's challenge B, second semester. And then, um, of course, you will want a nature sketch a journal or some kind of a journal. And then the, the Acts and Facts card for science, those are pretty cool. Those can actually be used as resources because they are legitimate research. So it's like having a little pamphlet on a card. You can use that in your writing or in your science fair project projects or anything like that. For reasoning, big deal for reasoning is introduction to logic. For first semester and then for second second semester is intermediate logic. So you're gonna have to get, get these big old big old. Okay. This is the textbook. This is the teacher. Wait, this is the student book. This is the teacher book. Okay. You're gonna want to get both of those. Teacher edition. See, it says teacher edition right there. And student edition. Student handbook is what it says. That's for first semester introductory logic. Okay. And then there are the test and quiz, there's a test and quiz packet right there, okay? So that's that. Now, for second semester, the books look very much the same. You have intermediate logic, teacher edition, and student handbook, okay? And you're going to want to be get with people. If you've never taken a logic class, you're going to want to get with some folks in your class and do that together with them because it can be a little bit complex. And these are the test and quiz packet. You can buy that separately, okay? All right. So that is reasoning, first and second semester. And then, of course, we have a trivium table for that. You know how they say we have an app for that when you're talking about Apple? Well, for CC, we have a trivium table for that. Rhetoric, geography, logic. Again, so great for visual learners. It has pictures. The syllogisms are on here. The um, enthymemes are on here. The porphyr... Por Porphyrian, Porphyrian tree. I can never say that word right. And then all the logical fallacies are on here. So when you're doing your fallacy detective book, you might even grab that so they can see that because that's going to be following them throughout challenge. All right.
That's it for reasoning. Debate is the American Experience Storybook, which I just had in my hand. Okay, so it's kind of a historical storybook. It's like it's like a, a history book in the form of a storybook. Okay, so that's going to be debate. And then, of course, you need your mock trial notebook. Both of these look the same. So every year we do a mock trial. That's where your debate skills are really going to come in. You're going to get this packet. The binder does not come with the packet. So you're going to get this packet. It is three hole punched and you're going to throw it in the binder. That's going to be your mock trial notebook as you prep for mock trial. And that's debate. Grammar is Henley. You're going to re use the same Henley book. And let me just say, when you do this Henley, um, most people cut the binder off and put a spiral bind it so that it'll stay open because you're going to be using it a lot. So you want it to be able to sit flat like like another, you know, like a, a spiral bound book can just sit flat on the table. I'm looking for vendors because I just recently heard that Office Depot is not doing that anymore for us. So we'll have to figure that out. Um, but same is true. I talked about Henley, the workspace, all that stuff. Same is true for Challenge B. And then for exposition for Challenge B, we're using words aptly spoken again, but instead of children's literature. Um, well, actually, in addition to children's literature. So if you already have the children's literature one from Challenge A, I just made a mess around myself, you guys. Um, if you already have the children's literature one for challenge A, then you would just keep that one because it has a lot of the books in it. And then we're also doing uh, words aptly spoken short stories. So you want to grab that one for challenge B. Of course, you still have the lost tools of writing, right? So you still need that set. And then you need the books that you're going to be using. Again, you can buy them from us, but you can also buy them somewhere else. These are living books that you can use anywhere. Uh, the Phantom Toll Booth, The Little Britches, Where the Red Fern Grows, Tanglewood Tales, and The Hiding Place. All of those are books that we are reading in Challenge B. Okay, that's it. I've been on for an hour. This is the longest one I've done. I apologize. I know in the beginning it was pretty frazzled, but um, I hope this is helpful. Um, and I see Jennifer hopped off. She did say this is very helpful. So that is wonderful. I'm going to say wonderful. Um, and that's it. We are good to go. It is nine o'clock. I hope you have a fabulous Thursday. Hit it hard, you guys. Life is good. Just keep it going. All right. I'll